Hey everyone, welcome to today's very special event, hashtag a walk through the forest of souls. Today is a very special day where many of us who have loved and known Rachel, and most importantly, have loved and known a walk through the forest of souls, uh, are just talking about it, how it's influenced us since it has been re-released you can find it on the Wiser's website or wherever it is you buy your tarot books. Mm. And today I have a very special guest, Miss yeah. Mary Greer. Thank you so much for um, coming on and spending a little time um, to talk about Rachel Pollock and uh, your friendship and also the work of this book. Thank you so much for coming tonight. Oh, thank you for doing this. I really appreciate it because... I'm on the road and, um, you know, having this chance to talk about her is really important. Yeah, thank you. Um, so I thought maybe we would kind of start just regale us with the story of maybe the early days of of you and Rachel <laughs> and and how, how this friendship developed um, over time. I mean, you've been doing Omega together for many, many years. Uh huh. <laughs> and we're, yeah. you know, both together at many conferences that uh, people consider the both of you kind of the two queens of modern day tarot, really. Um, so can you tell us tell us a little bit about uh, how you how you two got to know each other and, and yeah. how that friendship started? Yeah, I've been trying to remember what year it is, and I've got it down to 1985 or 86. So uh, it was in Amsterdam that I met her. Uh, it was my second time going to a New Age center that doesn't exist anymore, the Cosmos and, in Amsterdam. And um, they were very excited because she had uh, was teaching a tarot class there for the first time. Her book had just come out or had been out for a little while. And um, people were finding it just absolutely fascinating. And so he was saying, you know, we've got to introduce you to another American tarot person. And uh, so I went to her class and we spent um, a bit of time together that trip um, and just got along fabulously. It was, um, you know, to be able to talk to somebody at that depth and level about the tarot was wonderful. And then I visited her another time where I was um, got to stay with her and um, went around um, Amsterdam. It was when she was uh, creating her um, deck, which was originally the Shining Woman Tarot, later became the Shining Tribe Tarot. So she was just at the point where she had hired an artist and was very dissatisfied with what the artist was doing. And so she had started doing sketches of what she wanted. And both me and several other people were going, wait a minute, these sketches are everything that you say you want. <laughs> and she's going, oh, do you think I can do this? And we're going, yeah, you know, you're doing better than anybody else that we can imagine um, to, to do this work. Um, she had been uh, focused on... Um, the body or the, yeah, the landscape is body, a sacred uh, spiritual landscape. And so she was incorporating that along with, of course, um, all these um, cave paintings and the, the oldest human uh, artifacts, artistic artifacts that uh, she could come across. Um, we later in New York were going around to the bookshops looking for um, old books of, that had um, you know pictures of different cave paintings and and designs and so I remember that running around. Um, so uh, yeah, I had actually I think two trips where we talked about because th there was another trip where also in Amsterdam when she was painting the cards. So she had already uh, sketched out most of them and uh, they all had white backgrounds and we, she was going, you know, it looks kind of stark, all these colors. And I was going, well, color them, <laughs> <laughs> color the backgrounds. And she was going, um, yeah. And immediately just, I mean, it was like the words were out of my mouth and she started doing it and it was just fabulous. So um, 
yeah, because originally they um, the the images were paint, painted, but the backgrounds were just white. So um, yeah, I feel really lucky that I was there at these kind of seminal moments on the creation of the deck. How um, how is it that you were in Amsterdam at at the same time? Were you there just for another purpose or? Uh, well, De Cosmos, where I was, I oh, was speaking. Mm. Yeah, oh, yeah okay. it was uh, the New Age Center. And Rachel was also doing her class there at the time, but she lived there then. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it was while she was uh, still living in Amsterdam. And um, I must have visited her three times altogether. Um, then I had been invited um, to by the organizers, uh, the original organizers of the Omega Institute, um, first to give a lecture at a college or um, a prep school where one of them was teaching. And um, that was just a really exciting experience. So the next year they said, we're moving on to this bigger camp campus uh, because they had been uh, at a Sufi center before that. And oh, uh, um, wow. we'd like you to teach uh, Tarot. So um, I came and the second year they invited me back. And the second year, Rachel had was just moving back to the United States. So she had been looking at Rhinebeck as being the, uh, a place to, to buy a house. And I said, well, you know, since you're spending a lot of time in and out of Rhinebeck, her, her family was in Poughkeepsie. Um, why don't you uh, come, you know, I'll arrange for you to be assistant <laughs> and a guest at um, the Omega class. And she came, it was just wonderful. And then um, she bought her house and she applied to teach tarot there. And they said, sorry, Mary is our teacher. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was actually very flattered by that, that they um, you know, thought enough of me um, to want me at that point to have, have me coming back. And I said, you know, this is ridiculous. This is Rachel Pollack. Her book, 78 Degrees of Wisdom, is so fabulous. You can't possibly have a better person other than me. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, you know, let's split it. Let's, uh, you know, have her and me teach together. They said, well, you know, we'll have to split everything, um, you know, what you would normally get. And I said, are you kidding? That's, that's nothing compared to being able to teach with her. And that was it. When was this? Do you remember the year at all? Or um, well, let me see. It was, um, I think, eighty five and eighty six that I was seeing Rachel in Amsterdam. So it was probably around um, eighty nine. So mm -hmm. that's um, what 10, 11 years. It's about thirty, thirty two years, maybe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, Rachel was good at keeping track of, of dates, <laughs> and I'm, I've always been terrible with dates. I, I get number <laughs> dyslexia, and I can't figure out where I am number-wise. So yeah. I always, I relied on her to know how many years we had been at Omega. Yeah, so it's like, ish, like I get that too. I'm always like, ish, <laughs> ish, ish, you know? <laughs> so then yeah. since, since that time, you two were co-teaching, having co-teaching yeah. at Omega. Yeah. But, but you unless I'm not, I'm missing a piece, you've never co-written anything together or co-created a deck together, right? Nope. No, I've never wanted to create a deck, although I did work on the William Blake Tarot that my ex did. Mm -hmm. um, so I was part of that creation. But um, no, I um, I haven't wanted to create a deck. <laughs> Um, so Rachel and I did talk at one point about, uh, turning some of the exercises that we do that haven't ended up in our other books to, into a book. Mm -hmm. Um, we just hadn't gotten around to it. And, um, Rachel has always been much more busy than me with, uh, various book projects. I tend to space mine out, but that's because I'm very lazy. <laughs> no. I admire, I've always admired Rachel because she could do so much at the same time and just really focus on it. Every time somebody asked her to write um, a book for their deck, not every time, but practically as much as she could, she would do it. For me, it would take me a year or two years to do it. And yeah, mm -hmm. so um, I was just in awe of uh, her ability and to you know, produce so many works in so many different fields, you know, poetry, fiction, a mystery story, as well as science fiction, magical science fiction, in a, in a sense. 
um, yeah, uh, and com comic books. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and then have a ton of pen pals like like myself and a bunch of other people with these long uh, letters. You know, oh, really? You've got oh, all those letters? Yeah, yeah. For, they'd be oh, so long, and it'd be over like a period of a week because I think like writing letters were was her cure for insomnia. <laughs> And, mm. and she loved fountain pens. So, you know, yeah. a typical letter would have many, many different colored inks and like fountain oh. pen types and she'd explain them. And yeah, I always was like, where does she find the time? But, uh, you know, I'm not complaining, you know, <laughs> I oh. accept them all. Are you going to do anything with those? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. I, mean, I, I might, I might introduce like maybe some of her doodles that she put in the letters. Oh, yeah. um, oh. Fabulous. you know 78 days of Rachel Pollock just to share some of it um yeah but yeah. yeah yeah it was um very special and very just very precious to me those letters mm. so it, yeah. it may take me a while I don't know if I want I'm like mine right now <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah Let's keep them to um, you for for a while until something um urges you to bring it out mm. So yeah. with the two of you, you know, working primarily at Omega, you know, I, I, I have a bit of a, of a spicy question yeah. that like, did you, and, and this is true for all tarot readers, right? Like we all have our, this is our role. This is how we think it goes. And then here comes another tarot reader who says the opposite and it mm -hmm. completely works. Did you two ever have like a philosophical difference of opinion on tarot at any point, or has it always been an agreement? Oh, we've had um, little philosophical agreements and a couple of mini arguments, you know, not, <laughs> not any big blow up thing, but just kind of, you know, well, how could you say that? <laughs> um, you know, um, very few, but, um, you know, that's why they stand out in my mind. Um, we did have a difference in that I sort of have a rule that I very, very rarely break. I, I have broken it on a couple of occasions, but Rachel takes it as completely valid, um, uh, approach and that is uh reading for a third person third party mm -hmm. and i um i don't do that as a matter of fact if somebody comes and asks about someone else i say you know I, I apologize say i i won't be able to do a reading for them on that but if they would like to look at their own role their own concerns how they can handle it um then i'm perfectly happy to do that mm -hmm. um I, I must say that when you get into Lenormand cards, because when you're doing the 36, it becomes very hard to avoid that because, of course, there's, you know, a card for the other people <laughs> and their re relationship. Um, so that was always a bit of a stickler for me that I tried to keep very general. <laughs> but, so, um, yeah, I, with tarot, I, I try not to do that. Mm hmm and I know that your process is very much around prompting the querents to also include what what's what's showing up for them, right? What what are you seeing here as well? Um, yeah. And yeah. Um, did you? So I think that takes me to another interesting question, which is: Did you guys do readings for each other? Like, did you ever like? Oh God, I'm having this. Moment. I need to call Rachel <laughs> up and get a read on it. Yeah, um, I, we didn't do it often. Um, more, it's like more of the two of us commenting on somebody else's spread rather than actually reading for each other. And I'm not sure if I ever read specifically for her. I must have at some point. But um, three years before my ex and I broke up, um, I did ask her a reading about that. And uh, it was pretty clear that that was, it was going to happen. It wasn't time yet. It was inevitable, but it was a matter of timing. Mm -hmm. And all the issues were really clear in it, um, the way she did it. And mm -hmm. um, so it was, it was a great confirmation of something that I uh, felt was happening. Mm -hmm. You know, in other words, knowing that something's over and yet you still ha need time to complete various things with the person and before you actually break up mm -hmm. yeah mm. 
those, those, those yeah. are hard readings. <laughs> yeah, but you know, Rachel was really good about being very forthright about what it was that she saw. And I I should comment that uh, Rachel did do a lot more um, uh, interactive style readings than you might think when you know uh, looking at her material because she knows knows so much about the cards and when there is something that would really strike her like a series of cards that pointed very specifically to a myth mm -hmm. and so um, she would really go into that. So she was very capable of speaking in depth about um, a myth cycle that was appearing in somebody's uh, spread or, or whatever that was, but also incorporated uh, working with the cards in her own way. Yeah, that's such a that's such a wonderful um, sharing that she could be both kind of highbrow in some ways, you know, mm -hmm. of like really staying in the, the mythopoetic aspect of a card or the story but then really bringing it down home <laughs> like this is ending yeah. girl <laughs> this is gonna be on yeah. you know um and that's so delightful it's so delightful did you and ever I, have a reading with her no no oh. we talked about readings and yeah. I shared spreads but unfortunately um well I feel like I'm getting readings now with my 78 days of Rachel Pollock. Oh, talk about that a little. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And sorry that, guys, my my camera, it's Mercury Retrograde, and my camera's doing lots of weird things that it never does. So apologize that I'm all fuzzy and coming in and out of focus. Um, so yeah, so the 78 days of Rachel Pollock was just something I wanted to do to feel close to her and to honor her. And it's been kind of wild um, because for the first seven days, I was randomly doing, you know, going through the, her new book, her new re-release, A Walk Through the Forest. And mm -hmm. the, and, you know, and I, I don't do them ahead of time. It's really kind of a bibliomancy thing. And the yeah. first one, I, I don't know if I can get back to the actual page, was about temperance and, 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 and becoming an angel or being an angel. And I was like, oh my mm. God. And, um, you know, if people go to my Instagram or TikTok, they can go through it. So I did that for seven days. I did 10 days of the Shining Tribe and I picked 10 cards and read from the book. Right yeah. now I'm doing 78 degrees. And then yeah. I, I don't know next, like I'm, <laughs> we'll see <laughs> what, what speaks to me. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to talk about the Shining Tribe because I think you, you, you gave her great advice. I mean, her art was perfect especially knowing that the frame was very much through rock art and cave art, which yeah. is very down home and anybody can do it. And it lent it more to that energy. Um, mm -hmm. And so um, it's just been really, really beautiful uh, to do this and to share this Um and and to find things that I, I I didn't see the first time or maybe through yeah. a new lens, um, at the time that this is going to be, um, you know, published, uh, myself, Carolyn Cushing, I think Judica Ilks, and mm -hmm. um, oh, a few others. I apologize, right this time I don't have all the confirmations. We're yeah. gonna do her one spread, a reading to open the heart. Which I think her and Zoe, um, I think put together, and can we talk about Zoe too for a minute? Like, what oh, a sure. partner, right? Like, yeah, like like Zoe is is a tarot academic in her own right, and you know has worked with Rachel for years um, in many many mm -hmm. ways, um, and I think. I get this feeling that I sense her or, or, you know, her influence or her connection through uh, some of these works as well. Um, yeah. Did Zoe ever co-teach at Omega? I don't, I don't know. No, she assisted and she refused to um, do any part of that. So um, she was just uh, support. She would be there in the groups to, um, you know, facilitate group work um that was happening um and you know we've asked her on more than one occasion if she wanted to share one of her spreads like there was a favorite spread that rachel had that uh zoe had created and 
you know, we asked her if she wanted to share it. And she said, no, Rachel, you do that. Um, <laughs> so she's always been really reticent. She's going to be um, assisting again uh, at Omega this year in July. So, um, yeah, it's, it's going to be wonderful to have her. And actually, um, what Rachel and I taught together or at the same events several times every year. So mm -hmm. even though she lived in New York and I live here in California, we saw each other at least, at the very least, twice a year and usually three or four times a year that we would be at events or co-teaching mm -hmm. um, at other places. And um, so I remember that Zoe was uh, the first time Zoe contacted her because Zoe reached out to her in the oh. first place. Give us and... the dish. Give us the dish. <laughs> Actually, I, I should leave that to Zoe to say. <laughs> but, uh, I'll have but, you on um, next, Zoe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you know, basically, it was like, um, yeah, Zoe was really deeply admired the work that Rachel had, had done and uh, um, contacted her through somebody when we were doing one of, I think, the Bay Area Tarot Symposium. Mm -hmm. And um, they got together, and I remember Rachel being so excited, and <laughs> that it, there was just this perfect, you know, wonderful connection between the two of them. And um, then, um, at, at some point, uh, they decided to um, work together as partners. And uh, Zoe moved to New York from she had been living in San Francisco, so she moved um, to New York to um, be there with with Rachel. Wow. Ah. Wow. Um, yeah, it's a really special thing when you have a partner that loves what you love or is also oh. independently passionate about the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, that's such a cool story. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, so is there anything that any story that strikes you as something that you'd like to share or people know about your your time with Rachel or Rachel, you know, anecdote or anything like that? Um, wow. I hadn't really thought of that in particular. I keep thinking of all the times at Omega because mm -hmm. we experimented so much. One of the things that's kind of hard to express and, and when we have guests presenters it's it's hard to really um get the understanding but rachel got right away is that um we created so many of the things that we used and we later taught um or wrote about as responses to the questions in people would bring up in class so somebody would ask a question we go mm, okay how are we going to present this? How are we going to give them an experience of it? Because with Tarot, it's so often you don't get it till you experience it. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, we would make up things on the spot. <laughs> and <laughs> um, yeah, they, um, they, I would say 99% of the time they worked beautifully. <laughs> <laughs> 99 <laughs> uh, there's probably got to be at least one or two that you know we're you know okay but mm -hmm. um yeah and, and sometimes even with uh things that we had done before it took it to another level which was so exciting um because um Omega's a place that that's very playful mm -hmm. and um uh, it's you can try things out um the uh, the students interact a lot. We've really encouraged that to all uh, treat everybody that's there as peers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you know, we've got lawyers, we've got doctors, we've got, you know, all these professional people. We've got tarot readers who, who've been working in the field for, you know, 10, 20 years. And we've got absolute newbies. Mm -hmm. And um, but, you know, their life experience is always amazing. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, we've um, spontaneously created rituals. They have a lovely labyrinth there. And mm -hmm. so we create these rituals around the labyrinth. And um, that that spirit of experimentation and play with the students, um, always eating with the students. A lot of the teachers don't. They, there's a teacher's dining hall. Mm -hmm. And um, we always wanted to get to know the people who were coming because they were always such fascinating people. 
And, um, and then actually some interesting things would happen. Uh, one of the early years, I remember, uh, because Rachel became really close friends with uh, them, was that there was um, a man and woman couple who came and um, they were having some issues that were being talked about in the spreads mm -hmm. and they were trying to deal with in, in the spreads that were going on. And then there was a, um, another person who was considering uh, changing her entire uh, career direction. She was a professional and she was thinking of becoming a minister, going to a traditional mm -hmm. ministerial school. Mm -hmm. It ended up with <laughs> the the two women getting together and the poor guy being off <laughs> on their own. And they came back um, for a later one or two additional Omega Institute uh, experiences. Plus Rachel became friends with them. <laughs> and, and so, kind of, you know, we sort of, we're going, you know, gee, we've got a lot of responsibility here. <laughs> <laughs> People having life, life changing experiences that sometimes actually get triggered on the spot. Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, I had that experience. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the yeah. other part, like I wanted to mention too, is um, like the after party or the after the workshops, they everyone goes up after dinner to the cafe. Yeah. You know, gets an ice cream and, and just does <laughs> readings and, and practice. Or plays poker. Huh? Rachel, always, Rachel always wanted to play poker. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> with tarot cards or with just... Uh, she had, she tried it with uh, tarot cards, but all, it often ended up regular cards or, <laughs> you know, uh, um, just the minor arcana from a, um, like a French deck. Mm. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> created a couple of games, although none of them really went uh, anywhere with it. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. And so this year you're having, who's all, who's guest teaching this? Oh, uh, Benabel Wen, mm -hmm. um, Siddharth uh, Ramakush, uh, oh, I'll get his name wrong, sorry. Um, uh, he was at the Northwest Tarot Symposium and blew everybody away because oh. he's a neuroscientist. Oh, wow. That's amazing. And he's a tarot reader Oh, and so totally, cool. completely into tarot. So he's got those two, it's not left brain, right brain, that's a fallacy, but um, you know, the, those two different perspectives that are alive totally within him. And also Benabel when I mean, she can go totally into the, the magical realm. Or, and she also has studied a lot on the neuroscience and, and so have I. So um, because, um, well, it, it's two different spheres that are both related through tarot. And both need to be acknowledged in their own right. So, yeah. And then uh, for the five-day workshop, uh, it's Carolyn Cushing and, uh, oh, and Ellen Lorenzi, Lorenzi Prince, who will be there for the weekend and the five-day. Mm -hmm. Both um, Ellen and, um, and Caroline have worked closely with Rachel, and both of them went to Greece uh, with her on two different trips uh, to do the Ellicinian mystery work in Greece with Rachel. So they're able to bring that side, the ritual side of Rachel um, in and, and those fabulous journeys to Greece that were um, life-changing. Yeah. 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 I didn't get to go. <laughs> yeah, I know. All those should have, would have, could have. <laughs> yeah. It's so fascinating how tarot can really attract people from so many different walks of life and they bring their own education and perspective into their approaches. I just love that you you two have always been so generous with inviting guest teachers to come and play with you and yeah. learn from one another. Um, yeah. And it, it was very special for me to be there last year yeah. as well. It was wonderful having you there, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, um, we've had amazing experiences. I, I would like to say that one of the things that it was important to me from the beginning and then to realize that was, Rachel felt the same was one of the bonds that we had. And that is having seen other um, metaphysical professions that get very antagonistic 
Mm -hmm. um, I've been on the periphery of um, the, some of the astrology, well, as an astrologer, um, and have been to some of the big conferences there. And because some of my very close friends are at the upper echelons of it, I would get invited into things that uh, would have, you know, the the big names. And they'd look at me, who are you? Because I hadn't really established a name in the field. Mm. And the way they would kind of look down on me until mm -hmm. somehow it was proven that I deserved to be there, you know, at some private dinner or something, um, was shocking to me. Mm. And uh, I came across that fairly early on in the astrology field that there was very hierarchical. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure not all astrology groups are, but when you get the big conferences together mm -hmm. and stuff, it really shows up. And I thought, don't do that with my precious tarot, please. They'll <laughs> ever have tarot be that way. Yeah. And Rachel was very much the same way of, you know, the the people that get drawn to tarot are incredibly interesting people with so much to share and so many fabulous insights and warm and friendly. And so um, we worked really, really hard to um, bring that sense uh, to everything that we did in the tarot mm -hmm. world. And I think, it, uh, and also Walden Ruth and uh, Amber Stone very much feel the same way. And a, a lot of the other teachers, most of them that I run across are going, yes, yes, we are different. <laughs> so um, I, I just feel it's very special to be part of this and that Rachel's commitment to um, that, that to her, it was completely natural. It's like, why would it be any, any other way? Mm, I, I thank you so much for the, I could listen to you all night and I know that you, you've got to go and prepare for your oh. own travel and stuff soon. Um, I, I do have one thing I want to mention just please, because it was yes. a spread that um, just, um, I, I was supposed to be speaking about her last week and I drew some cards uh, as to what Rachel would say. Would say. And um, because through the whole process of her dying and her death, I've been drawing cards from the Shining Woman Tarot and her book to me is an oracle. It's she speaks as the priestess through she does it in all of her books, but especially when you're drawing the cards and you hear the priestess speaking in the book. Um, it, it is an oracle book. So um uh the very first card that I drew was the six of trees, which is the a walk through the forest of souls card. It shows a little figure with her dog walking through these trees that have the eyes of owls. So the wisdom of the ancients, of the ancestors in the trees. And then she's walking on top of an underworld. And at the very center of it is this womb image, which she deliberately says is rebirth. So um, she describes a woman as taking no notice, feeling no fears, completely confident, a charmed life, able to tame all dangers. And uh, through this, these trees and nature spirits that have knowledge of the world of the dead. So there she is walking through the forest of trees. And that's how I saw her within that those first few hours after she had died was I I went inside and just asked if there was any image, anything I should know. And I saw her walking through a forest where all the trees were as if they were coming alive and nod, nodding. And her footsteps as she walked left silverly light, silver light of her footsteps <laughs> as she walked through. And I thought she's fine, <laughs> you know. And she's good. so, she's good. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's so beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, I am. Um, about a week and a half before she passed, I had a very intense dream, and mm -hmm. in the dream, um, she'd crossed over. It was the moment of her crossing over from this world, mm -hmm. and the dream, it was like she was instantly caught, that there was not a second of, of 
of aloneness or wandering, like there was a huge group of people ready to receive her in love. It was a very intense treat. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. And she was seeing people. Um, I talked to her shortly before she died on the phone and she was talking about packing a bag because she was going to Poughkeepsie for her mother's funeral and her mother had died like 30 years before. And so I knew, you know, her mother was there waiting. Mm. Yeah. yeah. After, after this dream, I, I woke up and, and felt um, just very, very peaceful and at rest about her mm -hmm. transition. Um, yeah. And I, I suspect definitely through this first year, many people are going to have magical moments <laughs> with Rachel. Um, yeah. But before you go, I, why don't we, yeah, why don't we do a little like, hey, Rachel, what do you want us to talk about tonight? And then I'll just, <laughs> how about we do it this yes. way? I'll just flip and then you tell me when to stop. You want to, you want to, you want to sure. play? Okay, okay. So I'll just start like this, like. Stop. Okay. Oops, at the end. Let's go backwards now. <laughs> oh, go this way now? Uh, it, it, did you get all the way through the book? No, no, no. Oh, okay. Then go that page. Yeah. <laughs> that page. Okay. It looked uh, like you were at the end of the book. <laughs> no, no, no. Do oh, yeah. This right page or middle. this page? What do you think? What do you um, think? Glance at it and see whatever catches your eye. Okay. Well, I need my, I need my reading glasses. <laughs> <laughs> you would need them anyway. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Hmm. Hmm. Metaphors do not just help us understand or envision life. They also give us tools. Yeah. <laughs> you can do a ritual of spiritual rebirth based on the myth that God used the tarot to create the world. The ritual works best when five people give their concern and effort to the person who undergoes the transformation. It arose in a class I taught in a small town near my home that just happened to consist of five women. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, and I should mention that um, also with that six of trees um, and the, the walk through a forest of the souls has to do with um, Rachel's discovery and, and dedication to using the cards to answer big soul questions, uh, philosophical perspectives. And uh, first she asked, like, um, who is God? <laughs> mm -hmm. And then her second question that she asked with uh, the cards from this perspective was, what is tarot? Mm -hmm. And it was the six of uh, trees that came up, which is where the walk through the forest of souls came from. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. So yeah. in this passage, it talks about a ritual of spiritual rebirth based on the myth that God used tarot to create the world. Yeah. I I would love to be able to have seen that ritual of spiritual rebirth. Uh, um is there anything you, you want to share or riff on that with the mm. ritual of spiritual rebirth? Mm. Not Nothing comes to mind other than, you know, the various rituals that we, we did mm. at Omega and other places. And actually just taking a walk with Rachel could be its own ritual um, because seeing something, seeing two trees intertwined around each other, she would immediately see all of these things. And I'm going, what, where? <laughs> uh, and, you know, every, every time we walked anywhere or went any place, she would point out these things and those metaphors of what those were in those moments were usually no answer. So in a sense, it, it's not the ritual of rebirth. It's a constant ritual of rebirth, reconnection to the things that uh, 
make meaning out of your life Mm -hmm. and give significance to it. And she saw that everywhere she went, everywhere she walked, everywhere. Um, And it was such a pleasure to, you know, go on a walk with her because Mm -hmm. it was never just a walk. (laughs) So I know uh, at Omega, there's that, that labyrinth. Did you guys ever play, play with that? Yeah. In workshops oh, yeah. and stuff. We, we did some just together, her and me. And then we did um, occasionally there would be somebody who would come to us and, with a crisis point, And we would use one of the break times to do a ritual with that person um, in um, the labyrinth or um, various places. Yeah. Um, yeah, we. Um, well, something about. Omega is the being fully present with the people who are there and with their issues. And so to the best of our ability, we've tried to be present and not always easy. There was one person that when we were, uh, there was a period when we were acting out the cards uh, the last day, people would actually create costumes out of paper bags and scarves and, you know, tinfoil and, um, and somebody had gone to the um, cafeteria wanting to get knives because she wanted to do a ten of swords oh. and wanted to actually, um, she had told somebody that she wanted to cut herself. And Rachel and I, we, we sat there and said, what are we going to do? <laughs> and, uh, you know, that was one of the times because generally we were supporting a person and what they needed to go through that was one time I remember where both of us and very alien to our normal way of interacting went up and said no Mm -hmm. you cannot do this Mm -hmm. and it was what I realized it was what she wanted to hear Mm -hmm. this person she wanted somebody to care enough to say, no, you are not going to hurt yourself. You're not going to do something that will hurt anybody else in the class, just emotionally, Mm -hmm. um, you know, by your doing this, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, that is not appropriate. And we were, you know, for us to be absolutely firm and, you know, no questions here, this is absolute. And then as we realized that she was actually grateful for it we were able to sit down with her and 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 talk and you know not eliminate her in any way from what was happening but um I remember that because both of us it's somehow uh, (laughs) to be so in unison at that moment (laughs) that this was just an absolute we don't sit down and say now how are you feeling it was just no (laughs) you were like turn around and say like no (laughs) verboten yeah. completely mm. yeah yeah so um, it's so lovely to hear like that that exploring tarot at omega is not just about exploring tarot at omega <laughs> it's also exploring the forest of souls <laughs> uh, oh what a wonderful way of putting that thank you yes yes mm. mary thank you so much for your time and and sharing with all of us these beautiful stories I know everyone will treasure them thank you so much oh thank you for you know being here for me and you know helping out so that I could uh, be present on the on the 10th because the forest of souls the walk through the walk through the forest of souls that's the, the important part is um so dear to her heart yeah wow and thank you for the story of the Six of trees I didn't I didn't know that yeah. um I'll have to co I'll have to go back through the book and read it thank you so much yeah. oh yeah and everyone thank you all for for tuning in yes. um you know those of you I do know I've seen it that the shining tribe is still I've seen them on Amazon um they're still available it's gonna be reprinted oh it's, it is it's gonna be reprinted yes. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. It'll, it'll be um, maybe, I don't know if it'll be as much as a year from now before it actually comes out, but sometime within, you know, the next year, um, mm. it will be coming out. And uh, the uh, edition that's out now didn't have the quite the coloring that she 
had mm -hmm. ideally wanted. Mm -hmm. And this uh, new edition is going to be very exact with um, uh, the colors that she did. That's so exciting. Yeah. And and for the rest of us, we can just read this to wet our appetites and tide us over until yeah. we get the shiny tribe and then we can mash them together. Yeah. For all of our she, did love, <laughs> she did love the Rider Waite Smith deck. So perfectly fine to use that deck with any of her books. <laughs> true, so, true. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mary. And thank you everyone for tuning in and um, yes. enjoy your own walk through the forest of souls. Good night, everybody. Yes. Good night.